Got some questions here for the year 12 equilibrium topic. So as always, if you want to have a go, the link to the questions in the description for the video. So just click on that, have a go at the questions and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so question one, which is the incorrect statement for a system in dynamic equilibrium? Well, it's the first one. The concentrations of the products and reactants aren't the same, or don't have to be the same. They have to remain constant. That's a common kind of mistake I see uh, students thinking that they have to be the same. It's they have to remain constant. All the other uh, statements, the equilibrium can be achieved from both sides. The rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse reaction. The system is closed. They're all correct statements. So it was A. Okay, so question two, we've got to write the KC expression for this equilibrium here. So just a reminder that it's the equilibrium concentration of the products over the reactants. So our product is methanol, so it goes on the top in square brackets, divided by the equilibrium concentration of CO multiplied by the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen squared because it's been balanced with a 2. Part 2 is a calculation. So we're given the case C for the equilibrium and we are given the concentrations at equilibrium of the CO and the hydrogen and we've got to find the methanol's equilibrium concentration and the answer has to be given to three significant figures. So there's the um, KC expression again. So you can see we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. So we just need to rearrange to get this on its own. So it becomes that. And then we plug the numbers in. Remember you need to square that one. You get that calculate the value there. So the three significant figures I'm putting it in standard form. 2.61 times 10 to the minus 7. And obviously it'll be moles per decimeter cubed because it's a concentration. Okay, so the next question is about this equilibrium here. We're told that when the temperature was increased, Kc actually decreased. State the effect, if any, on the equilibrium yield of NO in this reaction. Okay, so if Kc has decreased, it means the equilibrium must have shifted to the left. Because if you think about this fraction here, to make that smaller, the denominator has to increase, the numerator has to decrease. So the way the equilibrium achieves that is by moving to the left. So... If the equilibrium has moved to the left, then the concentration of the NO has decreased. Okay, so the next part of the question is about redox. We've got to identify the element oxidized and reduced and include oxidation numbers with their signs to justify our answer. So you can see I've written up the oxidation numbers here. So we'll just go through that now. So the oxidized atom or element is nitrogen. It starts out at negative three. Each hydrogen's plus one, so that's got to be negative three. And it goes to plus two because that oxygen's negative two. So that's an increase in oxidation number, hence oxidation. So there's my answer for that one there. The reduced substance is oxygen. So it starts at zero and it goes to negative two. So that's a decrease in oxidation number. So that's it there. Next question, we've got this equilibrium between NO2 and N2O4 and we're given the colours of the two sides. So this side is brown, this side is colourless because we've got to use Le Chatelier's principle to predict and explain how the appearance of the equilibrium mixture would change when we change certain factors. Okay, so the first part of the question, the gas in the mixture is compressed, so that means the pressure is increased. So what's going to happen to the appearance, remember, of the equilibrium mixture? So an increase in pressure always favours the side with the fewest moles. So that means it's going to move to the right or forwards. So it will get lighter in colour or paler in colour because it's moving to that colourless compound more than the brown compound. OK, the next part of the question the syringe is placed in a warm water bath, so therefore the temperature is increased. Well, a temperature increase always favours the endothermic reaction. That's going to be the reverse reaction because we know the forward reaction is exothermic. So it's going to move to the left or backwards. It's going to get darker, more brown. The next question, a different equilibrium, but again we've got colours and we've got to explain the change in colour. So we're told that the addition of aqueous acid turns the solution in orange colour. So aqueous acid is making it go that way, whereas um, 
adding aqueous alkali, it goes that way because it's getting more yellow. So we've got to explain that in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, so addition of acid. Acids contain or donate H plus ions. So that concentration is going to increase. The H plus concentration is going to increase. So the equilibrium deals with that by making more of the forward reaction happen because the CrO4 2 minus ion is going to react with the extra H plus ions and send the equilibrium more to the right hand side. So it's going to look darker, more orange, which is explaining what's happened there. So all I'm saying is adding acid increases the concentration of H plus. Equilibrium will therefore shift to the right to minimize the change. The solution turns orange. So moving on to the addition of alkali. So obviously an alkali is going to have the opposite effect. So adding alkali is going to remove H plus ions, it's going to decrease their concentration. And so more of the reverse reaction will take place to replace the H plus ions that are lost. So more of this reaction will happen and the equilibrium moves backwards. So it's going to look more yellow. So I'm just saying there, adding alkali will mean that OH minus ions react with H plus ions, lowers the concentration of H plus, equilibrium shifts left and the solution turns yellow. So the next question is about the Haber process equilibrium. So the first question is actually asking about the rate of the reaction. So even though this is kind of um, in an equilibrium question, it wants to know about the rate. So the increase in pressure will increase the rate due to more particles per unit volume because you're physically pushing them closer together. Therefore, the frequency of collisions increases, or you could say there's more collisions per second. Part B now, so we've got to calculate Kc for the equilibrium. We're given all the equilibrium concentrations. Notice they're all the three significant figures, so my final answer is to three significant figures. So to work out Kc, we obviously need the expression, so there'd be a mark going for that. So hopefully everybody can appreciate. It's the, remember, it's the product's equilibrium concentration over the reactants, and remember the balancing numbers become powers, so that's cubed. So putting your numbers in, we get 0 0.0801. And the next part of the question, we've got to use some Le Chatelier's principle to explain how the use of a catalyst and a higher temperature would affect the amount of ammonia present in the equilibrium mixture. So I've just copied and pasted the equilibrium from above. So use of a catalyst, that's going to have no effect on the amount of ammonia because catalysts don't change the position of an equilibrium. They just increase the rates of both reactions equally. The higher temperature... Remember that forward reaction is exothermic, so a higher temperature is going to favour the reverse endothermic reaction, so that amount of ammonia is going to drop. And the final question is a percentage yield calculation. So we've got to work out the percentage yield of urea. So we're told that a tonne of ammonia makes 1.35 tonnes of urea. So first thing we'll do is calculate the moles of ammonia so that's a million grams one ton is a million grams so mass over mr gives us the moles of ammonia apply the mole ratio so theoretically we should make half as many moles of um, urea it gives us that number there then we're going to work out the actual moles of urea formed so that's that 1.35 tons so 1.35 times 10 to the 6 grams over the mr of urea so that's the actual moles of urea so the percentage yield is the actual over the theoretical times 100. There's the numbers there, and you get 76.5%.